Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to share this really cute DIY. I made this little small bench. We needed a little bench for the side of our couch and I wanted one of those rustic looking benches but didn't want to pay the hefty price tag. So I made one myself and I thought I would share the how-to with you guys. Make sure you stick around, it's gonna be a fun video. So at Home Depot, I picked up two two by two little boards. You can get away with one if you're really good at your measurements, but I always just get two just in case I mess up. I also picked up this two by eight board. They are eight feet long. So I had Home Depot cut it in half just so that it was easier to fit in the car. This is the miter saw that I always use. I love this one. It is a great one if you're just starting woodworking and little projects. This one is a really good one to start with. So for my bench seat, I measured out 17 inches and just did a straight cut right down the center. I do have a sketch that I made that I will show you guys later on in the video. It shares all the measurements and how to do this exactly, all the cuts you will need and everything. So for the legs, I measured those at 18 and three quarters for each leg at the highest point. And I did put those at 15 degree angles. So the sketch that I made really kind of breaks it down to which angle needs to go where, but um, all the angles are 15 degree angles. So it makes it really simple. So of course you will need four legs, two middle supports, and then one support that brings all of your legs together, if that makes sense. So I will show you guys the sketch just so it's a little bit easier to understand. I'm such a visual person, so a visual always helps me. So at the top, you have your 17 inch in length, your 18 and three quarter inch legs. You'll need four of those, your 12 and an eighth middle support, and then your leg supports are nine and three eighths. One of my legs was a little bit difficult. I had to scrap it because it had that center hole and it was going to make my bench leg rocky. So I had to scrap that one. So it was a good thing that I bought that second piece. While I'm making all my cuts, I like to lay everything out just so that I know that it is the right way. And then I can attach everything once I get all of the pieces. The leg pieces should mirror each other exactly. So I'm going to just eyeball where I want those screws to go. And then I'm going to pre-drill the holes for the screws just so that it prevents cracking. And the screws I had were just some that I had laying around. They're two and a half inch screws and they worked really well. I put four in the top, one for each leg, and then one, sometimes two, in the legs and the supports. Then it was just distressing, which I really wanted to overdo the distressing this time. I've made several of these and I always tend to not distress it enough I feel like I feel like it could always use more so I really wanted to round out those blocky legs and those kind of really tight corners so I wanted to round everything out so it does look really um, distressed if that makes sense and more rounded so I took a wood chisel and I really took off the corners just to make it look more rounded you can kind of get that look with a sander but I wanted it to just look and feel really kind of vintage and have that more worn look rather than it looking like something that you had just made I wanted to make it feel as authentic as possible so these wire brushes really help I used that little one right in the corner the small tiny one and I find if you use these wire brushes on where there is a very distinctive wood grain it really brings it out so I know this looks totally chewed up but we're gonna sand it so don't worry but it really makes those grooves kind of come out and really look worn you can see how it just brings it out also make sure that you wear protective eyewear there's literally like shards flying everywhere and dust so it really helps me feel a little bit safe to wear the protective eyewear here's another really great example of bringing out those wood grain pieces it just makes it look a lot more worn and vintage like those little screws will be covered up with wood filler i'm waiting to do that until the very end with all the distressing and the brushing, um, I like to tighten it up at the very end just because it can tend to get a little bit loose. So I like to be able to tighten everything up once it's all done getting distressed. So once everything is distressed to your liking, I just take my little hand sander 
and I put 100 grit sandpaper on this. I just use 100 grit. I wish I could say that I had the patience to go to like a 120 and then a 220, which is probably the proper way to do it. Um, but yeah, I just sand everything, try to get all those shards off, make it as smooth as possible. But you do wanna do as much sanding as possible just so that there are no shards and it doesn't leave splinters. So after I've tightened those screws, I'm gonna take some Gorilla Glue and I'm also going to take some little um, shavings from behind my miter saw. This is from cutting all the wood, there will be uh, sawdust back there and you can mix this with wood glue and it makes a complete match to your wood bench so I'm just gonna mix that up and shove it in those little tiny holes and it totally just disguises itself you'll never know that there was a hole there once it's all done drying you can sand it I'm going over it with just a little piece of 100 grit sandpaper I also like to use this if there's any little grooves that your hand sander your automatic sander can't reach um, I like to just use this um, to get into those little hard to reach spaces. And this is the bench pretty much all distressed, sanded and ready for stain. I do like to take it out on the lawn or somewhere outside of my garage and blow it off um, just to get all the dust off and then use a microfiber towel to get any of those little dust particles off as well. I tried on a few different stains in some of the bottom parts that you won't be able to see, but I ended up choosing um, the Weathered Oak by Minwax. If the stain is a little bit too strong and you want something a little bit more subtle, you can also go over it with a little bit of diluted paint to kind of wash out some of those red tones or some of those orangey looking tones as well. That's another little tip. So I will just completely stain everything. I like to use a towel. You can also use a brush or even a sponge. Make sure you dispose of your towels if you're using a towel um, properly with stain. Don't leave them laying around, they are flammable. I also like to give it about uh, three, four, five days to just really air out. The stain can be really strong, so I'll just put it out on my back patio and let it completely dry and ventilate because if you bring it in the house, I feel like it's really strong um, in the house once you stain it. So I also like to use the Bare Decorative Finish Wax. This, I feel like, tones down those oranges and reds. This is in the white and they make it in all different colors, but I really love this stuff. I think it's about $12 and it really just seals and protects everything and it really tones it down, which I love. So this is the bench right where I envisioned it. We needed a little something on this end and I feel like this bench is the perfect size and I love that you can customize it to a space in your home that really needs something small like this. So overall, I think this bench probably cost me about $25 in total. I had pretty much everything except the wood. So yeah, I feel like for 25 bucks and a little weekend project, it turned out super cute. I also love these ideas for little craft fairs or making them from home and selling them on like Facebook Marketplace. This is a good little side hustle. Um, and yeah, it's just a good way to make some extra money too. If you love doing projects like this, having that creative outlet, getting a little bit of extra exercise, making a little bit of extra money, that is right up my alley. <laughs> So I hope this video helped you guys or inspired you in some way. Let me know if you have any questions at all. If you try this project, make sure you tag me on Instagram. I always love seeing and sharing your guys' projects too. And with that, we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.